So what about films in the 90s? There were great films. You know, Baywatch. Do you know Baywatch? Nowadays, I know people, younger ones, when they say, hey, I have now watched a little bit Baywatch, they will tell you, boys, this is boring. It's so boring, nothing happens there and on and on. Of course, you know why? Because nowadays, when you are into filming nowadays, cut, 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 scene, 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 scene. Everything has to be quick. Think on shorts on YouTube. You know, when you don't have every one, two seconds, three seconds a cut, people will uh, go away. You know, you have, because the brain is now works order. You cannot do something like here now, a uh, long time with nothing what happens, people go away, you know. But back in the days it was to watch films, they have much more longer uh, in the period of time, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, until the cut comes and the new scene comes, you know. And that was uh, really uh, relaxing to watch, you know. Nowadays this is so fast, this is so much information what you get. You know, it's also cool, don't get me wrong, it's not nowadays it's all shit, back then it was good. But when you watch the video, you are a 90 guy, a 90 girl, and you like that. So we can talk about <laughs> like this, but everything okay. So Baywatch was very, very cool. David Hasselhoff, you know. David Hasselhoff has to be mentioned in the 90s. You can say what you want. Nowadays, people laugh about David Hasselhoff. Yeah, David Hasselhoff, yeah, couldn't sing. It is a joke and this and that. But now I will tell you something. David Hasselhoff is one of the biggest superstars we had in the whole industry of music and television. You know, that can everyone tell me something other and I will tell you it is not true. That you are not true. <laughs> you know what? I'm not for real. David Hasselhoff back in the days was uh, absolutely. So here we go again. The camera was overheating again. But not that problem because we have winter now and it has minus seven degrees out. So I take the camera outside on the window and it functions very quick again. So David Hasselhoff, absolutely amazing superstar. You, if you don't know that when you are now young yeah, and you didn't live there, really, David Hasselhoff was an absolutely icon, an absolutely super, super mega star, you know, in the early 90s. And people overlook that a lot of times, you know. So when David Hasselhoff watch this now, maybe you don't know, you never know. If you watch this now, David Hasselhoff, you were the greatest of them all, you know. And I will tell you now why to all people. Because the influence what this guy had to so many people, you know, that is unbelievable, you know. He started with Knight Rider. Knight Rider was not in the 90s. It was often being shown in the 90s. When you were a kid, you have seen Knight Rider always in the 90s, you know. And now tell me something. Everyone in the modern Western world knew what Knight Rider is. You can go wherever you want, say Knight Rider, they know what this is. And to make such things happen, before internet was existing, you know, nowadays it goes viral, you know, it's not, uh, it is more easy now, you do get something into the world. But back then, to reach such a thing, to be known around the world, like Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, everyone knows in the world who this guy was, you know, uh, 1972, I think he died. And people still know who this guy is. You know, this is amazing to reach something. A Knight Rider is in the 80s, but you can also call it in the 90s because every kid was growing up with Knight Rider, you know. And this is unbelievable. What he reached there with that thing. And then with Baywatch, we come to this. Baywatch was in the 90s. And that is why this guy is so big. The influence he had on a whole generation. Everyone wanted to be like Knight Rider. 
Of course, someone will watch now and say, no, I'm not. Yeah, but many, many people, you know, and the influence is amazing. And for that reason, I will call him the absolute super mega star. And in Baywatch, now listen, when he made the Baywatch film, you know, when he played in there the, the role model, Baywatch was the most shown series back then. And David Hasselhoff was the film actor who was watched more than any other on the planet. He had the record from, I think, one milliard. I don't know in, in English what is one milliard, one milliard, I don't know. But he had the record, Not no other guy was being watched more than David Hasselhoff. And now you can tell me he was not big, he was the biggest of them all, you know. And Baywatch was so cool back then, you know. That was the hottest thing. Who was the hottest girl from the whole 90s? I think they made one time a list. Who was the hottest woman from all 90s? It was Pamela Anderson. And now what? Where was Pamela Anderson? In Baywatch. In Baywatch she went big and got the name. Without David Hasselhoff, Pamela Anderson would never be there in that spotlight. We had a lot of women as women of the year in the whole 90s, in the whole century, you know. Uh, is it called century? I don't know. 10 years, how it's called in English, you know what I mean? It's not a century, it's a decade, a decade, so it's called in English. So, you know now what I mean with impact? That was amazing, you know. So David Hasselhoff and the 90s, fantastic. And then as a kid, you went to the shows, you know, his music. You know, some people say he was the thing because of uh, Berlin, but this is political. You can uh, put away those things with the music. But also in music, uh, he tried, you know, he was not the best singer and that, but kids wanted to see him. And I had one time the opportunity, but I couldn't go there because there was a football game beside where he gave the concert and there were English football fans. And so as a child, they said to me at home, no, we will not go there because when there happens something with English fans, you know, they are more rough and when they are drunk and this and that, you know, so I couldn't go there. But yeah, Heslov was absolutely fantastic. And Baywatch later on, Carmen Electra was in there, you know. Carmen Electra also went up there, you know, as a, a film. But there are no, a few more stories, you know, with Prince and all that stuff, but that is a whole other part we will not make today. And then other films, Kevin Alone at Home, he's legendary, you know, one of the most legendary films for Christmas, Kevin Alone at Home, you know. The, uh, how it's called, McCulkin, I think, the actor, that was a famous figure in the early 90s. Yeah, and then the, the next episode was Kevin Alone in New York. That is also amazing. And I know one film, maybe you know it, The Goonies. The Goonies, I think, from Steven Spielberg made. When I'm right, yeah, Steven Spielberg, yeah, I think, don't get me wrong, but I think so. The Goonies, as a kid, when you watch that, when they went into the tunnel, all the kids, and then uh, there were like uh, um, a water slide, a water slide through the mountains and then into a sea in the mountain. And as a kid, you wanted to make that water slide. That was a dream. And I tell you what, I didn't know the name of that film. I could only remember now decades ago, now I have the word decades ago, I didn't know the, the name of the film, but I could remember all this stuff. And I was searching and searching and searching. And one day, I don't know if it was on YouTube or otherwhere, I saw advertisement, the Goonies. And then I know where the Goonies was, yeah. And I got the, uh, the Blu-ray, uh, fantastic, you know. Yeah, and there were a lot of films. I don't know, when was MacGyver? Was this uh, late 90s or was it early 90s? Oh, this is now tough. 
you know, I don't know, but Mac Kaiwa is also in the early 90s in there because we have to, we watched it there. And when you are from the US or from uh, other places, here in our uh, based German based uh, countries, some things uh, we have seen years after. For Knight Rider, they were in the 80s, but uh, I think we were three years later. We have the first on on television three years later you know for the first time so the us was always the first and we were always behind all stuff all figures all what you got us was first and we had to wait in europe that we get it so us was always the greatest because they had everything before us they all came from and all that stuff you know and one other that i mean so many films in the 90s Think Kevin Costner with uh, Waterworld. That was also in the 90s. Waterworld. That was also, as a kid, it was fantastic to watch, you know. And yeah, for films we can talk uh, hours for hours. When was Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters also has to be in the late 80s or early 90s. Ghostbusters and then the next thing. Ghostbusters. Tell me that. How big was that? You know, Ghostbusters, the original thing, this is uh, with no words how great this was. When you see that for the first time, you have never seen anything like before. That was amazing, you know. And then series, for example, one, Lewis and Clark, Superman, the, the series, you know, not the new one, Lewis and Clark. Now they have a new one, but back then the original with Terry Hatcher. You know, Terry Hatcher then went on to, uh, what was it called, uh, was it Desperate Housewives? No, I, I cannot tell you now, I, I have it not in my head now, but Terry Hatcher, you know, and there she was by Lewis and Clark, and was also, as a kid, outstanding. How could this guy fly? How do they make this? Nowadays, when you watch it, people will say, is this boring, and you see that it's not real, but I remember that. When I was young, as a kid, and I watched Lewis and Clark, the colors there, the rest, this was all so new, Metropolis, that was outstanding, you know. This was, wow, how do they make this? And, and really, really great. Nowadays it looks all older, yeah, because you have much more effects now, what you can do. Nowadays, when you are into filming, you can make more stuff at home. Than they had uh, could do back in the days when you say it in light words. You know what I mean? Nowadays people can buy a green screen, this, that, and on and on, uh, full frame camera. When you have money, you can make a lot of stuff now, and uh, easy, you know. But <laughs> with green screen, I can tell you another story. When I made the street boy video, the 24 courts in down the rankings from the courts. I made a video about rank 24 to the best place street ball court what we have and i made it with a green screen and <laughs> the, the problem is many people don't know this you know i, I see a lot of stuff in there uh, they put the green screen exactly behind their head and think here yeah, put the camera in and then one click and uh, chroma key and green screen it's all done yeah and what happens there they don't know about filming and they are not interested and there are so many people who say I'm not interested in it. I make it that finish. But when you put the green screen exactly behind your back, then the hair always get green and the stuff, you need it to put it away uh, two meters. You know, two meters is perfect because the green uh, screen reflects and then you have it on your hair. And when you have blonde hair or long hair, whatever, then you have a big problem, you know. And when you put it two meters away, you, you need a big green screen, you know, otherwise you see that also often people do the hand out and then you don't see because they are outside of the green screen, you know. And so I had a small space and I could not sit uh, uh, straight, you see that in the video, I had to take my head a little bit off and when you do that, you have so much tension here uh, and that feels so uncomfortable, you want to sit normal but you cannot. And then I tried to a uh, little bit stretch and all that stuff, you know. 
So that is a little background story behind the videos, you know. So yeah, and films, we can go on and on. But yeah, so we go on to wrestling a little bit because uh, with the magazines, we have here magazines. That was also about the only way to get information was to watch the Raw, you know, Monday Raw. I don't know on what day it was here with Carlson Schaefer and Günther Zapf and to have such, uh, how it's called, ma yeah, magazines. Watch at this. That was a special thing, Superstars 1. Here you have shilling, 69 shilling, D mark, it was 980, uh, you know. So, and that, yeah, really, really great. Yeah, here, you, <laughs> you know, I've seen it, didn't have seen it for a long time. There it stands on German. I read it in German for my German fans. Die einzige aktuelle Informationsquelle über die beliebtesten Superstars. That means in English, the only information which is actual, actually, what you can get about the w, uh, w, uh, WF superstars. The only information what you can get is where the magazines. So, and that was, wow, and you had this. So, yeah, wow, great. I have to show you with that. Oh, I've seen Mabel. Mabel was in there. So... Here we go with that camera. Will, will be nice to cut all that stuff. Will be a long time. So here are the superstars for my chief seat. So we go a little bit into it. Irvin I Scheister. Andre the Giant. Well, with Hulk Hogan. This is legendary, this picture. The Macho Man. The Mitchell. Yeah, no, no, the Mitchell. Here Ludwig Borger. Kamala, you know. So Kamala still lives, you know, but I think Kamala only has one leg, you know, diabetes, I think. The one, two, three kid I have seen now with a long beard, Adam Bomb was also great. Jerry the King Lawler, Luna, you know, back then with Shawn Michaels. And, uh, I always said Andre the Giant, Giant Gonzalez. But when this guy came out so much bigger than the Undertaker, Macho Man, Jimmy Hart, <laughs> the Shawn Michaels, Mr. Perfect. Yeah, Mr. Perfect was also one of my favorite wrestlers, Lex Luger. Can you remember the day when he uh, went in there, there was a challenge, who can make a body slam on Yokozuna? And then Lex Luger came in and he did it. That was also one of the most memorable moments as a kid. Yeah, Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, wow. Bret Hart, really, Yokozuna, fantastic. And the stickers, we also had the stickers. I still have stickers, you know, on a thing. I, I never put it away, so they were on. That was, I think, was WrestleMania, you see. Yeah, and who, uh, what people don't know is that uh, also, I think, cars, yeah, here you see it. Reduction, Carsten Schaefer. Many people don't know this. They only know him from the television series, but he also made things on and uh, magazines, you know, Carsten Schaefer. And here we had the regular WWF magazine. So here we come to this. When was the date? Do we have a date on here? Here, 1995, the British Bulldog. And there you had always posters in. Who can remember that? In the middle, there were always posters in. It was a, a big poster, you know, and you could hang it on. The only way to get to some things, because here in my area, I don't know one shop where you could buy a poster from wrestling. And that was fantastic, you know. So today I make a little mistake. Why? Because sometimes I watch to the screen, you will not see that. Uh, uh, often, but the display, the front screen is only a little bit beside the lens, and so you will, when I'm sit far away, you will not see that uh, too much. You know, when you watch exactly, you will see that. But you know, I'm a hater when people now like this when I'm in a distance, and now I, sh I uh, watch through the screen on the full frame cameras and bigger cameras, 
the screen is here you know here you see that here is the screen here the lens you don't see it that much when you watch in there but when the screen opens up on the full frame cameras and you watch here now watch this so yeah and i talk and i talk yeah this that all the people never watch into the lens that is so annoying there you see immediately they have nothing done with filming when you only watch to the screen when you enter filming always put away that screen when i have a wide angle on i don't need the screen i know i'm in the picture but it's not nothing more annoying than to watch away when you talk with someone you watch into his eyes think of that you talk with someone for 10 minutes and this person has not watched at you for the whole 10 minutes always watch the way then you would say well, nothing i have to do with this person anymore so always watch into the lens. <laughs> so here we have it. Yeah, here is a, still a poster in there. Ray, I can, <laughs> I see it immediately. Ray Saramon. I don't know why I didn't have put it out, but this is Ray Saramon for sure. Wow, great here. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah, so here this was the magazine I've seen, a gaming. Yeah, that was also part of the 90s. We had in here gaming. Donkey Kong Country Super Nintendo. Because gaming, that was the time in the 90s. Gaming, streetball, wrestling, cool uh, series and television that we had in the 90s. Especially in the early 90s. That was, and skateboarding. Skateboarding also, you know. Then you were cool. When you did all that, that was the amazing part. Gaming we come also. Long video today, but no problem. <laughs> Shawn Michaels. Oh, but the camera watched with my eyes. So, but when was the first one what I have here? That is the question. Because yeah, I will not, I have not much space now that we don't get the domino effect. When was the first magazine in here? We have here a little few cards. So now let's watch. Uh, so when was the first one? We have to enter it. So now we have it. Good done. So the 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 under are the the beginning of the things. When was it? So here we have it. Racer 1993. This was the first magazine what I had. I don't know when the, uh, since when they existed. 1993, the one, uh, March 1993, here we see it. The Steiners, Mr. Perfect, the poster from Tatanka. We go a little bit into it. Bret Hart training, yeah. Nasty Boys and Yokozuna here. And do you know that Donald Trump was in wrestling back in the days? You know, he wrestled. Donald Trump, the president back in the days, he wrestled in the WWF. You know how much they uh, had influenced the WWF. Uh, all guys were in there. You know, Sylvester Stallone, I think, when I'm right. Or Mike Tyson was in there. It was later on. Or was it also late 90s? Late 90, yeah, it's 96 or, yeah, I don't know exactly, but there were so many people in the WWF, you know, musicians, uh, actors, and on and on. But you see that now, I have seen something. Here we have the ring, what I told you in the beginning. This was the blue WWF ring, you know. So in what figures do we have here? Typhoon, we have, we have uh, from the Bushwhackers. All figures which are in there we have here on our table. All are in, you know. <laughs> Sash and Slaughter. Great, great, great. And here I have also one thing. I have to show you. We have to get it done the right way. So the last thing is the stickers. Here, the stickers. It was from Merlin. Merlin stickers. That was also cool to collect. We had it all. There was always one Pepper Shango, and then you had to collect the stickers, you know. 
you see here one was not there with numbers nowadays <laughs> nowadays you know who does this nowadays maybe some kids i don't know but back in the days when you had to collect it and when you didn't have a number you had to buy more stickers and nowadays the, the way is easy you go online and order all numbers and it's done back in the days maybe it was possible perhaps when you called the number on the paper there there was a number but it was all with costs you know now it doesn't cost much you write an email but back then uh, the parents would say to you you don't uh, call to other country you know maybe it was possible yeah but you had no information you had no information so yeah Shawn michaels you know you were always collecting more stickers more stickers great yeah <laughs> hexo jim duggan hulk hogan here you see him carsten schaefer <laughs> perhaps you see it carsten schaefer there you have a picture from him great with his word, Dele Fünf, how you, uh, I told you that. And here his, uh, uh, his signature, Karsten Schaefer. Yeah, what this guy did so much for wrestling. When was this book? Dita and Sports always. But when was it? 15 shilling, 2D mark. Where, where, 1992, you see? 1992, there you see how long I'm into wrestling. Since 1990, you know. I'm a street baller since 1991 and wrestling since 1990. Yeah. And a gamer since 90. Yeah, 1991, I'm a gamer. But it was before, it was 1990. But we come to gaming also, that we do uh, immediately now. So I have to put away the camera. Maybe it will get overheated uh, <laughs> again. But yeah. I will go now to gaming because it is too long for wrestling in one part. So I have to make this in the other direction. So we have it. So now I will lay it on the floor because otherwise I will uh, damage it. Or is it possible? Do you think it's possible that I can put it again here? Ah, I'm scared. Yeah, so it has to function. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, do you see that? Wow, we had luck. So it looks better. Wow, once again. So gaming. 90s and gaming, the golden era again. Nintendo, Sega. These two words, it's all done. You know? The normal Nintendo and the Sega. The, those two names, when you live there, you know immediately, you know? I think almost every kid had a Nintendo or a Sega. You never had twice both things. You had one or one. You know, and you always said, I have a Nintendo. This is the best thing. Or I have a Sega. That was the best thing. And there was, before the 90s, there was the normal Nintendo. Yeah. And then there was the Sega Master System. They were 8-bit. But then they come out. And that was where I was going in, the Mega Drive from Sega. I got it in 1991, you know, 1991, it was the first console what I got. But before, and that was in this room here, it has to be 1990, I got the original Game Boy. The first Game Boy which existed, the thick one with the black and screw. Uh, how it's called? No color. So I can tell you, there were no colors. The original game. So you know what time it is. Camera was overheating again. Out to the window, you know it already. So I got the Game Boy and Tetris 1990. And that was absolutely amazing. I was in this room here on the other side there where I played it. And I got another game, not only Tetris, it was amazing. A whole back hatch where you put in the Game Boy, you had a back hatch, and also now you have to. Uh, what do you think? Now, what really do you think? Tell me. It was wrestling, you know. I got a wrestling game, and that was the ultimate uh, 
everything to me. There you could play The Undertaker. I don't know the name of it. Game Boy Wrestling WWF. And that was amazing. You know, it was such a pleasure. That was the first time I went into gaming, 1990. And then, as I told you, 1991, the Sega Mega Drive, the console 16-bit, and that was before the Super Nintendo came. Or am I right now? Super Nintendo, I never had it, I never uh, had this, but I was also 16-bit or was it 8-bit? I think Nintendo, 8-bit, Super NES, I don't know it now exactly, but Sega was the first one, that I know. They were ahead and that was amazing, you know, and I got Sonic, Sonic 1, the first Sonic which existed. And when you know my videos, then maybe you have seen it that I have to be a fan because sometimes I have in the Street Boy videos a t-shirt on with Amy Rose and Amy Rose is in the game of Sonic and so I'm a big fan since then. So I can tell you that right now, Sonic is one of the most legendary games out there, yeah, which has ever been done. Sonic, everyone knows. I know some people don't like Sonic games and all loves it, but the fact is Sonic is one of the most legendary characters out there since then, you know, and it was always Sonic against Mario. Well, who is better, Mario or Sonic? Sonic was the fast game. Uh, always the, the advertisement fast and action and this and that and Mario was with more words longer and all that stuff I liked both Mario I only had on the Game Boy you know but I only uh, I never had it but I got it from friends or to play it a few times but Sonic was amazing and I was good in it but I never could do it to the end back then I always was the, uh, where you got into the water world, I never got it done. And always the fear when the water, you know, you could go into the water with Sonic and then you need air. And when you didn't get air, then was the sound, bam, bam, bam. And you got so fear that you, yeah, I never got it done. You know, the thing is, nowadays, the games are completely different. I will tell you that. I have a few more games, but nowadays they make the same game again and you can play it on the other uh, console, on the PC, you know, but I tell you that the game, some games are complete order to play. They have a complete other uh, playability, you know, the figure runs more easily and this and that. And when you play it on the Mega Drive, it was so much harder. So you cannot compare the same games now as back then. And nowadays, I don't talk about Sonic now, but in general, but uh, they, they make it also with new levels, a little bit older, easier this, that, you know? And so you cannot compare when you say, oh, I have played it complete 100%. No, it's not the same as back then, you know? Because it's a little bit different. And back then you had no information. When you didn't know how to, uh, to make this level, when you were from the 90s, you know that. How, dif how difficult this was, game over. Who knows the name game over nowadays? Game over was a word in the 90s every kid has known. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you will know it when you watch that. Game over, that was always the horror. Game over, nah. No, you know what I mean. You tried your best and when you were game over, it was really game over. You had to start the game from complete new. There were no save points. Almost no game had save points, you know. I know uh, which game had save points. It was uh, on the Mega Drive. There was one game in the early time. Uh, I have to think about it. I will, say, I will remember it. Um, Wonder Boy and Monster World. Wonder Boy and Monster World. Also one of my all-time favorites. The Wonder Boy series, fantastic, you know. 
and that was great. There you could uh, made it. But yeah, that was the time. And there was one game I got one year after Sonic won. It was Kid Chameleon. When you know this game, this is an absolutely legendary game under the hardcore players from Nintendo and Mega Drive. You know, on the Mega Drive, everyone know it on the Mega Drive, Kid Chameleon. The game was unbelievable. You know, you had no information. You cannot Google it, ah, how to go to a level. Ah, I go to YouTube, I watch a, a Let's Player who is, how it's done and all that stuff. You couldn't do that. And also there was another part. Nowadays you have played over decades all games. You have experience in that. You know, you know how levels are going and this and that. But back then that was the first time you went into gaming. You didn't have experience. There was not much before the Nintendo, a little bit other stuff, you know, in the late 80s. But that was the beginning of gaming. So you had no experience how levels function. They went completely new there. And so it was so difficult. And Kid Chameleon is a legendary game under the hardcore Mega Drive players. Because this game was so long, you never you didn't know when this game ends. This had so much levels. You played one level, next level, next, 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 next. You played until you were game over and you always thought, when end this game? It has to be now the last level. You had no information about it, how much levels are in there. And there were different ways. When you went in that level to that goal, you come to another level. And sometimes you got the hardcore level. How was it called? There was one level in, ah, I don't know the name now. There you, they say that was the hardest level of them all in the early to middle 90s. There was no other level harder than this. Now how was it called? I, I have it in my head but I don't know it now. Ah, perhaps I, I find the words for it. That was unbelievable, you know. And nowadays, I can tell you, I have played Kid Chameleon on the Mega Drive. On the original Mega Drive, I played until the end. But that was something I did 25 years later. I could do it, you know. I am a little bit talented, but I'm absolutely not good in gaming when I see the experts, you know. There, I am not that good. I, I'm always, to be honest, you know. I'm a good player, but I'm absolutely not one of the better ones or best. They have so much talent, so quick and all. I need more time to get it done. But from the first Sonic to now, I have played all Sonic games complete. All games I have finished to the boss, you know, and I finished the boss. So that was amazing. Only Lost Ring. Oh, is it called? No, the Sieg... No, uh, Sonic and the Secret Ring. Yeah, the Lost Ring or Secret Ring. That game was so stupid, you know. Really, I, I just played it a few weeks ago. I hate this game. This is so stupid. But I had other Let's Players. Let's Play Marcus. This is a famous German Sonic Let's Player. Also, he played it and he <laughs> moved it out as such a big Sonic fan. All other games I made complete, you know, until now. So, <laughs> yeah, I have something. What I got to the Christmas tree, Sonic Superstars, the new game. Really, really nice game, a two, uh, 2D game, you know. I always hope to get a new 2D game, not 3D, a 2D game. Really, really nice. And yeah, gaming, there were other games, you know, the Wonder Boy series. And also, I played every Mario game from the first one to the last one. I played all the lost levels, the original one. I played, you know, they had different things. They put one Mario, was it Mario? Ah, uh, so much now because I have nothing scripted. They made one for the US easier, you know, because they thought back then this is too hard for Western players. And so in Japan, you got the real hardcore levels and in Western, you had the easier game, you know. But also I played those levels afterwards, you know. Decades later, I got, I bought all consoles again 
I used consoles and I played all Mario games because my goal was to finish all Mario games. The toughest one to me were not the lost levels, it was Super Mario Galaxy 2, the end level. I don't I, I tried that so long. <laughs> and then in the controller, this is now a television, Amazon television, uh, uh, remote, I think in English, or, and in the controller, the battery was away under the last level. It was, uh, was amazing, you know. But I got it done after so many hours for the end level. Yeah, and gaming was a big part. And then in the middle 90s, I think 1995 or 6, the PlayStation came out. The beginning of the PlayStation. Nowadays, you know, you cannot imagine a world without the name PlayStation. It was an original 90s console. Yeah, and I got it. I knew that. I got it from my dad. Never seen my dad, but uh, I called from Mallorca. I was, yeah, I was Mallorca, yeah. And I called there to my grandma. Ah, because on birthday I was there. Did I get the, uh, did dad bring the, the PlayStation? Did I get it? Did I get it? Is it there? Is it at home? And so I got the PlayStation. And then there we had Final Fantasy, you know, amazing Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, the beginning of it, on the PlayStation 1, that was amazing. There were a lot of games, they had the NBA game. NBA 1997, I think, I got the, got the game. You know, Street Ballers, you know my channel. That was amazing. Skateboarding on the tennis games. So, that was also the new era with the PlayStation. Also very nice command and conquer. I once said, but I'm not into the shooting games. I hate shooting games, never do this. I, I'm always into the uh, jumping games, you know, jump and runs. I always loved. And later on, Zelda. I never played Zelda, but later on, nowadays, I have played all Zeldas. You know, uh, it, it's called only the newest Zelda. I have not here because I don't have money right now. But all other Zeldas I have played to the finish line. Mario. Zelda, Sonic and Wonder Boy. Those games I have played all complete from first to last one. So yeah, the gaming world was nice. There were uh, a legendary German gaming magazine. It was called Gamers. It was for the Mega Drive and that stuff, you know, Sega. But it was so cool, you know, Gamers. I remember once I was lying on the sofa there and I was ill and I said to my grandma, no, please, can you drive to the shopping mall? It was called the dates, you know, the shopping mall, the old dates, not the nowadays dates. When you know, when you live here, the old dates was complete order, you know, I know that at the time. And there was a newspaper shop in and she drove there and bring back the gamers. There was, and it was how it was called. It was on there, I think, hotspot, the uh, red, uh, like, uh, like Pac-Man a little bit, the uh, hotspot it was called. And um, yeah, it's, it's so much what we have now, you know, so many decades. Cool spot, not hotspot, cool spot I think it was called. So yeah, there were a lot of uh, legendary games. I had one of my favorite one was Quackshot, Donald Duck, but it was called Quackshot. And I played the games in the early 90s, you know, 1991, 92, 93. I was waking up at 5, 6 in the morning and I went into the living room and I played until the others uh, went up in the uh, flat, you know. I played 3, 4 hours all the time. And that was so cool. And that I loved so much, you know. And really, really cool. I had Baloo also on the, uh, on the Mega Drive. And there was shilling always around 800, 900 thousand shilling one cassette uh, coaster. And I tell you other story. I have here the Switch. It stays here, the Nintendo Switch from nowadays. And it is damaged. I don't know why, but I cannot make it to the television anymore. On the uh, on the console, it all works perfect, but I have no uh, signal to the television. I tried all. 
the cables are good, the television is good, and on and on. And also the Xbox 360, it is over. The disk drive is, uh, doesn't function anymore. But I tell you, the Mega Drive from back then still works, you know. But you know, nowadays we have the laser in, back then there were the cassettes. And this was much more robust, it works. Only the controllers get a little bit lost. So yeah, gaming, big, big part. We can talk so much things, but I think uh, it is okay for now. So we will go on, but I have forgotten something.